Greetings from the European Parliament studio in Strasbourg. My name is Ilza Nagla and today we will be going to talk about same-sex marriage. It is illegal, it is allowed in 13 EU countries, but in six countries there is no legal reg uh, regulation whatsoever. And among those six is Latvia and also Poland. And that's why today I'm joined by uh, MEP from Poland, uh, Robert Biedroń. He is from the political group of socialists and democrats. Very nice to have you here. Thank you for having me here. And I'm also joined by Mark Angel from Luxembourg and yeah. also from the same group of, uh, poli uh, of socialists and democrats. Yeah. You have been the first openly gay mayor ever in Poland for four years. How was that possible, especially taking into account that some municipalities of Poland have declared themselves as the LGBT ideology-free zones? Well, you're right. It's a little bit like being the only gay in the village. And <laughs> this is how I felt uh, for a long time, uh, even though the village was not that small. Um, and there were, uh, for sure, some other gays were hiding as mayors in other parts of Poland. but. It is difficult, of course, because um, um, the great majority of uh, Polish LGBTI community is forced by the political, cultural, social climate to hide and to, and to not express their real identity. And uh, this shows the climate uh, around LGBTI people in countries like Poland or like Latvia, where you... Uh, m m possibly might have uh, uh, much more than one uh, mayor who is gay, but all the rest is forced to hide. So uh, it is difficult, and uh, um, I believe uh, uh, in the future this situation will change because uh, in every other normal and open and tolerant country, you will uh, notice that there is much more than one uh, gay in the village. But I'm just wondering about the attitude in Poland. It's now it's sort of becoming more uh, anti-LGBT community, but it's like public sentiment, or there's only political sort of push, or they how they go together. It's all connected, of course, because we as politicians and we know it very well, and also journalists, we are role models. What we say, people are listening to it, and they're not always following that. But it's very often that they they follow that. So if there are politicians like in Poland, which uh, uh, are ruling and it's a state organized homophobic uh, rhetoric uh, and LGBTI people are the scapegoats of this then you you have what you say so uh, um, and it's clear that uh, uh, from hate speech to hate crimes is a very short way so uh, it creates a situation where you just simply uh, are forced to hide and you are uh, being uh, a potential victim of uh, physical or uh, psychological uh, violence. And there, uh, uh, not to surprise, 60% of uh, Polish young LGBTI community uh, 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 was thinking about committing suicide in this kind uh, of environment. You also ha have what you ask for. In Luxembourg, the situation is very, very different. In Luxembourg, uh, same-sex marriage is allowed. Your prime minister is gay, openly gay, mm -hmm. happily married. Um, and as far as I know, people are still, uh, children are still born in Luxembourg. Um, families are still, uh, still a value. Uh, country has not collapsed. And since I know you have been in Latvia, why do you think in Latvia so many people think that if we would allow same-sex marriage, then our country would collapse? Well, that's a difficult question. Uh, um, I don't think the country would collapse. I think that's, uh, that's uh, some part of society, those who are anti-gender people, they try to, to come up with this fake news. The country won't collapse. You mentioned Luxembourg. It didn't collapse. Another example which I love to give is Malta, one of the most Catholic countries in Europe. Where, where divorce was even forbidden 10 years ago. Well, they had a, a government, which uh, a progressive government, which changed the things, and they had recognized that the society is ready for this and is already further than the laws. And I have the same feeling in Latvia. I was at uh, um, uh, Baltic Pride in Riga uh, this summer, which, which was fantastic. I met fantastic people. And I saw all these young people there um, 
gay young men, lesbian women, uh, 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 queer people, uh, non-binary people, and very active and very engaged. And I, I saw something, I, I had the feeling there's a train on track rolling and no conservative politician can stop that. These young people and these people will speak up and there is a movement and I think there will be intelligent politicians also who recognize this and who will then hopefully also um, work towards a political change uh, in Latvia on, the, on these questions. But the political change doesn't come so easily. We have two ministers in the government. Yes, we who met are them. I met gay. them. They're openly and, gay. And Wonderful. And still the government um, has not uh, sort of done much in, yeah. in these terms. Maybe they are isolated in the government. And, and, you know, it's also about allyship. It's not only us gays who, or lesbians who can move to things. We need allies. And this is why I'm so happy in the European Parliament, where I co-chair the LGBTI intergroup. It's an intergroup of 155 MEPs. And, of course, they are not all gay like me and Robert or lesbian or, or, or transgender. They are allies. And this is very important, to have this allyship. And, um, and it's important that... Uh, these people, they, they say every day LGBTI rights, just like women rights, are human rights. You cannot divide human rights into categories. They are for all. And um, in Luxembourg, uh, I, I, um, when I hear what, what happens to uh, Robert in Poland and what a difficult way they have to go, I, I feel very sad and I'm like very privileged that, that in Luxembourg it's different. We have a civil union for almost 20 years and then in 2013 we had also uh, the marriage for all. And um, my message was always to say we're not taking away anything from... from um, heterosexual people can still marry. They just, there's, we take, we just want the same rights. It's not, not more. We don't want an extra right. It's not just about extra rights. rights. It's about the same right. But the thing that you just mentioned that uh, in Luxembourg it's one situation, in Poland and in Latvia it's, it's, it's very different. So even though we all live in the same EU, European yeah. Union, the, by country, country by country, it very differs a lot. And it seems that in, in Western Europe, uh, there is more acceptance when it comes to uh, same-sex marriage and in Eastern Europe, or what we call former Eastern Europe, we are, what, more conservative? Which is strange, isn't it? We are not more conservative. Maybe we, we have not enough of public debate and experiences they went through. And uh, uh, I'm sure uh, many of Poles and many of Latvians uh, are open, tolerant uh, uh, people who want to live in Europe of equalities and not uh, inequalities. And uh, uh, that's the goal. We, we need to finally have a union where besides having a common market and freedom of movement, we will have a European Union of Equalities where everyone will live the life they want. And this is what we and Ma uh, with Mark, we fight for um, uh, in this uh, European Parliament, in this House. Um, there is no uh, any reasonable, no, uh, reasonable uh, um, um, thing to have uh, not equal rights for Poles and Latvians. Why uh, a gay or a gay guy in Poland or lesbian woman in uh, in Latvia should not have same rights like a gay guy in Luxembourg or lesbian woman in uh, in France? There is no any objective reason to have this inequality and that's why we should push all together all people who want to live in an uh, uh, environment which is safe, which is uh, equal, which is protective to uh, uh, have um, a good uh, resolutions, good directives which will make this Europe of equality. And now in September the European Parliament passed a resolution, right, uh, mm -hmm. that same-sex marriages and partnerships should be recognized mm -hmm. across the EU. What if the national governments still continue to ignore that? What can you do? Well, um, the European Parliament passed this resolution for marriage but also for um, 
the rainbow families, for rainbow families that they uh, have free movement in Europe. Uh, that was the main issue on this resolution. But um, the European Parliament uh, is a voice in Europe and uh, we cannot go to Latvia or to Poland and, 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 and impose something. But we have also the European Commission, which, which, which is an ally in these issues. And uh, this time, it's the first time that the European Commission has a commissioner for equality. It's Mrs. Helena Dali from uh, uh, Malta, and she came out a year ago in November last year with an LGBTI equality strategy. And there she said, we will have a few legislations where we can legislate from European uh, side, and, but also she gave recommendations to member states, and the Commission will monitor that. The Parliament, the European Parliament, we will monitor that. But there will be uh, there will be a directive on um, if you're a parent in one country, you have to be a parent in all the countries. So if a family, uh, a family, um, two men with children move from France to a country where it's not recognized, this country has to recognize it. Then it's not family law, national family law anymore, but it's the uh, European law of free movement. And, and, and that's what Europe can do push this uh, this issue we also will push as European Union that uh, hate speech and hate crime will be put up on the list on euro crimes and also of course if hate speech and hate crime is targeted to LGBTI people so we can do some things together with the Commission but uh, we have to make pressure on on member states we have to make pressure on member states and and you saw in Poland with with the pressure of cutting some funds we have reached already some goals so it's a long process but we shouldn't give up and uh, we have to 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 get the population on board you know when I when I go to Poland when I go to Hungary uh, and also in Latvia when I met the activists there they are still they're looking towards Brussels and Strasbourg and towards Europe hoping for some support and they hope for support and they 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 believe in us and 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 therefore we we, we never give up and we push and we push and we push but of course it also has to come from the country mm. itself, uh, the, um, the, the activists and, and the allies, the families of, 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 of gay uh, men, of lesbian women, the families, they have to push and they have to, 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 to make pressure that the parties put, put this in their programs and then... So uh, saying that they should not hide, right? No, they, sh they should yeah. not hide, yeah. they should not hide. Yes, it's easy to say, of course, when yeah. you live uh, yeah. in a safe space, but it's up to us also as politicians to create this safe space and so yeah. responsible responsibility yeah. to create a safe environment when those people might come out. Because as you can imagine, being from Latvia or be, being from Poland, we know that it's often not a safe space. And Mark traveling mm -hmm. all around supporting these people have met probably hundreds of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of people who are forced to hide because of uh, uh, who they are simply. And uh, it's our responsibility and we, uh, that's what we fight for here. And I, I know also, and I agree fully with Mark, we, it's unstoppable. Those people already know that they have rights. I see how it's changing in Latvia. I was at the first Baltic Pride in Riga a uh, long time ago, and I remember those stones, those battles being thrown towards us. Now Mark is coming back from Riga. He says, there was a little counter uh, manifestation. Mm -hmm. This is a sign of change. He met a lot of happy people, brave people, yeah. who did their coming out, who are determined to fight, and he met a lot of allies. And this is a great change, and I see also uh, uh, the opinion polls in Latvia, how they slowly may be for us, too slow may be for us, but still changing in a positive direction. Yeah. It's the same thing in Poland. Uh, there, there is a great majority in Poland of people in favor of registered partnership, more and more people supporting gay marriage. So the change will come. And uh, uh, politicians from the other side who are trying to, uh, to ban it, to stop it, they should understand and they should know that we are unstoppable because we know we deserve equal rights and no one will take it away from us. Yeah, and I was really, surpri uh, really surprised in, 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 in Riga what a rich, rich uh, um, community there is there and um, we, they organized an LGBTI uh, Hero Awards and uh, a lot of people got awards and a lot of these people belong to the LGBTI community but also others who were the allies. So I come back to this allyship. It's so important to, to, to have allies in this fight for equal rights and uh, and uh, 
it was it was really wonderful to see this rich civil society in your country and and that's why i say there's this train on track and it will arrive in the in the, in the okay. on the right station thank you so yeah. much for this debate on this positive note we will uh, we will end this debate and uh, yes lgbt rights are important issue and times are changing and uh, as we just heard allies in this fight are very important thank you so much and bye thank you, thank you.